Way back when I was working in the lab, this is what I used to work on. I used to look at mitosis and how cells knew when to divide. And that is what Zotero Upwards is going to be covering in this video. The cell cycle and mitosis and how cells know what to do, where and when. The cell cycle. The cell cycle is a process that cells that can continue to divide go through. It takes a cell from having just divided through to being ready to divide again. Now, not all cells will continuously go through this cycle. Specialized cells and some stem cells enter this resting phase called G0. And this can be temporary or it can be permanent. The majority of the cell cycle is spent in interphase. The first part of interphase is G1 or gap phase 1, where the cell elongates and all of the organelles replicate or double. This makes sure that there's enough space and enough organelles to be split between the two new cells that are going to be created. S phase or synthesis phase is next, and this is where DNA is replicated and also checked for errors. Then the final phase of interphase is G2 or gap phase 2. This is where proteins that are needed for cell division are synthesized, and also ATP production increases as well because we're going to need that energy to go through cell division. Time-wise is only a very short section of the cell cycle, but a lot happens within this short period of time. It is important that you remember the difference between mitosis and meiosis and that you spell them correctly in the exams. Mitosis produces two daughter cells, and the stupid way that I remember it is that mitosis has a T in it, and you can write two. Whereas meiosis, that produces four daughter cells, doesn't have a T in it. This is not the most genius way ever, but it is really effective for working out the difference between mitosis and meiosis. The daughter cells in mitosis have the same DNA. They have the same number of chromosomes. And they are identical to the parent cells. Chromosomes in mitosis. The chromosomes that we see and that we see in all the diagrams and that we can see down the microscope are only visible during cell division because they're formed during interphase when the DNA is replicated during S phase, ready for division. So in this first nucleus, we have the chromosomes before the cell is replicated. So we have one chromosome formed from one chromatid and it's joined in the middle by a centromere. Now we can see the cell as it would look after S phase of interphase. So after the DNA has been replicated, you can see here we still have chromosomes, but they look different. Now we see that typical sort of X-shaped chromosome which we get because each one is a single chromosome, but it is now formed from two identical sister chromatids joined in the middle by a centromere. So the DNA has been, each chromosome has been replicated, the DNA has been replicated, so that gives us two chromatids that are identical in one chromosome. And then we can see what the cell would look like, or one cell would look like after mitosis. So here we've got one chromosome again made of one chromatid because obviously the DNA has gone back to the original number. So this is really important that you can recognise chromosomes like this in the stages. You have to recognise what a replicated chromosome looks like. And then this also can be represented in the change in the number of chromosomes or the amount of DNA can be shown in a graph. We often refer to N as the normal amount of DNA in, a, in an average cell, and then 2N replicates this idea that it's been replicated and therefore we have double the amount of DNA. And you may see it in a graph like this. So the quantity of DNA is just an arbitrary measure here, but we have N, so we have start off with the cell has, say, an amount of DNA of 2, 
then it rises and increases to four, which is our two end stage where the DNA has been replicated, but before the cell has divided, that increase from N to two N, that slope of the line from two to four is when DNA replication is happening, so S phase. And then you can see the line drop down suddenly back to two, and that's clearly when we're going through mitosis and cell division, because then we get back to being N again, so having the same amount of DNA as we had when we started. Again, it's really important you can interpret diagrams and graphs like this and talk about what's happening to the chromosomes. There are several different stages of mitosis that you need to know the different names for. Followed by prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and cytokinesis. The way that I always used to remember the order when I was studying was with it, Matt. I don't know what it stands for, it doesn't really stand for anything. If you can come up with something that it stands for, then leave a comment down below to help other people. During prophase, the chromosomes will become visible as they condense. Two centrioles will develop in animal cells only, and these are the spindle poles. They will move to opposite sides of the cell. The nuclear envelope will start to break down and the chromosomes are now free in the cell, within the cytoplasm. At metaphase, chromosomes can now be visualised as two chromatids joined by the centromere. The spindle fibres will attach to the centromere on either side and the chromosomes line up in the centre of the cell. Each side is attached to a different chromatid. In anaphase, the centromeres will split and the individual chromatids will start to move towards opposite sides of the cell. During telophase, when the chromosomes reach the opposite poles, they are uncoiled and a new nuclear envelope will start to form around the set of DNA. In cytokinesis, the cytoplasm and organelles will be divided between the two new cells and a new cell membrane will form around the new daughter cells. These new daughter cells will then go on to enter the next cell cycle, entering the G1 phase. Mitotic calculations. Each cell type and conditions will determine how long cell division takes, but we can calculate it, so how long cell division takes or a stage of cell division, if we know the following information. The number of cells that are undergoing mitosis, we can look at a diagram to work this out or be told given numbers in a table. The total number of cells that's been used to calculate this, and again, we can be given numbers in a table or we can count it ourselves from an image, or how long one cell cycle takes in terms of time. So you'll hopefully be given all of this information or giving a way of being able to work out this information. And from that, we can then work out how long cell division or mitosis takes or how long even a stage of mitosis takes. So an example question might go like this. For this microscope slide, calculate how long the cells are spending in anaphase. One cell cycle lasts 0.7 days. Okay, so as I said, we can work it out using images like this and you could work this out yourself with an image from a practical, for example, or we could be given a table of numbers, but in this case, we've got um, a slide showing some cells going through mitosis. So the first thing we need to do is count the total number of cells we can see. So you can see I'm putting little purple dots here as I go. 
I'm just making sure I'm counting each individual cell that I can see in my field of view. If there's only half a, um, less than half a cell in the field of view you can see, we don't count it. So in total, I've counted 98 cells in this field of view. Then we need to find out how many cells are doing anaphase. So I can see two here. So that's two out of 98 as a proportion, which gives us 0 0.02, which is obviously about 2%. Then we need to calculate the time. It's going to be better to do it in hours rather than um, days. So one day is 24 hours and one cell cycle lasts 0.7 days. So we're going to do 24 hours times 0.7 to get the number of hours that one cell cycle lasts, which is 16.8 hours. Then we're going to take our proportion of cells that are doing anaphase and times that by 16.8 hours, which is the total for the cell cycle. That gives us 0 0.336 hours, which is about or approximately 20 minutes. So it depends on what units it asks you for in the question. Just make sure you're prepared to convert time. So days, hours, minutes. And so that tells us that that's how long these cells are spending in anaphase, which is obviously one phase of mitosis. Another thing you could ask, be asked to do with these um, mitosis images or tables or questions is to calculate the mitotic index, which is just the proportion of cells that are going through mitosis or dividing. So again, same picture, and we're doing a very similar thing. So then there's 98 cells in total, but instead of just looking for cells that are going through anaphase this time, we're looking for any cells that are going through division or mitosis. So these will be all the ones that have really visible chromosomes that you can see, and ideally they're going through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. And then once we've identified how many there are and counted them, we can just do the proportion calculation again as a fraction and work out what we're looking at in terms of mitotic index. So there's a cell up here that's clearly in prophase, the chromosomes are condensed, I can see them. There's a cell here that obviously as we looked at before is in anaphase. There's a cell over there that we also said could be anaphase. Um, from zooming in and having a look at the image, I think it might also be telophase because I can see a cell wall potentially being formed between them. So I'm gonna put anaphase slash telophase here. Again, it will be quite clear in the exam what the stages are. If they are asking you to identify them from an image, it won't be ambiguous. Then we've got a metaphase down the bottom, and that is pretty much it. All of the other cells are in interphase because there are no really condensed chromosomes and really obvious chromosomes going through those stages. We can see the nuclear envelope clearly for nearly all of these cells. So it's just these ones that I've identified as definitely going through mitosis. So in that case, there are four cells. So that's four divided by 98 will give us our proportion of cells that are dividing, which is our mitotic index. They may want this as a decimal, and in which case you can just leave it as 0 0.04, one, sorry, or you can change it into a percentage if you need to. This could then be used in the same way we just used it to calculate how long cells are taking to divide if you are given the time or length of one cell cycle. Ouch! This is why in some videos I write explain scratches. <laughs>